What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to a Haps Leaks video, or, well, okay, wait, 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 let me restart. Welcome to a Haps uh, reading, or summary, I keep messing up, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Basically, we're going through the story, Help Wanted. Uh, the story has leaked, and uh, I am super, super excited to cover this because this is a nightmare of a story. And I am, I'm gonna cry trying to read out this summary. Uh, so I have my notes, like always. Uh, I have six pages of notes, actually. Six, six pages! Uh, because there's a lot to cover, so let's get straight into it. Remember, there are spoilers, of course, in this video for Help Wanted, uh, which is the story we are covering today. Uh, I believe uh, we will get all of the leaks uh, by tomorrow. So I'm gonna cover the other stories tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, so if you want to see that, then make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Anyway, let's get straight into this. We meet a guy named a, a guy named Steve Snodgrass, and he is a janitor at a gas station uh, at minimum wage. But the thing is about that is he doesn't really want to be that. He wants to be a video game developer because he has the skill set for that. He has the the imagination for it and he is really good at digital art and design skills and he is currently working on a game called Chip Off The Old Block which is about some chipmunks which is clearly a reference to Chipper and Sons and uh, L Chip and, and things like that um, but basically he is a video game designer and he wants to do that as a living now off the side of that in his personal life he, he wants a girl basically so he's on a dating app and he is messaging Amanda and uh, they've been chatting for more than a month and they've been on two real dates. That's all you really need to know about that. So one day at the gas station, a man walks in and it's not a regular customer. Usually they're very messy, you know, inexpensive. Uh, but this one, this one is, is wearing an expensive suit and he comes in and he says to Steve, are you Steve Snodgrass? And he says, yes, well, I am Steve Snodgrass. What do you want? I want you to come outside, please. Are, are you a police officer? No. He wants him to go outside to offer him a job. So Steve goes outside and talks to this guy and it turns out that this guy is called Brock Edwards and he is in charge of talent acquisition at Fazbear Entertainment. Here we go boys, we have Fazbear Entertainment coming to a video game developer to develop some video games, specifically horror games, to poke fun at all of the rumours from Fazbear Entertainment from Freddy's because Steve actually is aware of the murders that happened at Freddy's all those years ago. So this, guys, is the rogue indie developer for FNAF VR, potentially. Anyway, uh, so we might get a story on that, but we'll talk about that at the end probably. Uh, if we have time. I don't know if we're going to have time. I'm still on my first page. <laughs> so basically this guy wants Steve to make a series of four games uh, and he wants him to go to a remote location completely. He's going to have luxury things, he's going to have his own chef, he's going to have all of the things that he needs to sit down, make these games and rebrand Fazbear Entertainment essentially. But Steve feels that, so that there's something wrong and he doesn't want to leave Amanda at all. So it he turns the offer down. Hmm. Interesting. He gets home and he receives this strange message from a girl named Victoria. Uh, he looks at the picture of Victoria, because he doesn't remember a Victoria on this dating app. He looks at the picture of Victoria and it is the most beautiful woman he could ever imagine. It is literally his ideal of a woman. And he's like, maybe this is a catfish. Yes, we have catfishing now in, in, the, FNAF, in the FNAF story. F faz catfishing. Faz fishing. So this ideal woman is asking Steve to go on a date and Steve says yes, weirdly. I would have thought he'd said no, but that's probably where the whole flaw of the story comes in. <clears throat> she says that she wants the date to be at her house and Steve is like, well, are you sure about that? What if I'm a creep? And she's like, I trust you. Uh, he doesn't think a minute to not trust her, but he decides to go anyway, but in order to do that, he actually has to cancel plans with Amanda, which he does as well. So it's kind of weird. Maybe he's already like hypnotized in some way. I don't know. Probably not. Anyway, he goes to Victoria's house and there's nobody at home. So he just walks in and the entire house is just empty. It's just blank walls, no furniture, no nothing. And then Victoria comes out and she is exactly who she looked like on the dating app. 
And uh, yeah, so that happens. And then she's like, well, let's have a picnic on the floor. Um, seeing as there's no furniture, we can have it on the floor. Uh, so they decide to do that. But then Steve hears this really high pitched electronic scream in his ears. And he sees this red light flickering on the smoke, uh, smoke alarm. Uh, even though there's no smoke or anything. Uh, and then as he tries to turn it off, the room span around like a merry-go-round. Ah! Then we cut to him waking up. And this is so cool. I love this time gap because he wakes up in the same exact room, but there's suddenly furniture and on the walls, there's paintings of Victoria in different situations. She's hiking in one, I think she's in her bikini in another or whatever. And Victoria comes in and says, hi, babe. And, and he's like, what, wait, what? I'm so confused. And she explains that apparently he was in a car crash and lost his memory. They are married. They are married and have two kids. Abigail and Avery. What? Now... <laughs> this is insane. This is so this is such a cool story honestly from start to finish. So Victoria's like live in the moment, don't get hung up on the on the on remembering the past. You won't remember the past no matter what happens. Um but he sees all the wedding pictures and stuff and he's like hmm, I I I was happy in those photos. Clearly I don't understand why I can't remember it. I wish I could. Uh but Steve is like okay, I guess I'm married to her now. That's cool. Yeah. Anyway, clearly, clearly all of this is a lie, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. So Steve works overtime apparently at the station, but they are in very f uh, bad. Uh, they are in a bad place financially, and Steve needs to find a better job. Beep beep. Guess who comes up in the drive? Uh, 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 Brock Edwards, <laughs> and he comes in this black car. He he comes out and and he's like, hey, the office still stands. Do you want to work for Fazbear Entertainment? Do you want to make games for us? And Steve's like, yeah. So he takes the deal and he goes back inside and says to Victoria, Fazbear Entertainment saved us. Then he hears something, like someone creeping around downstairs. It turns out it's just Abigail sleepwalking. His, his child is just sleepwalking. But he's, he still can't sleep. He, he feels someone in the house, like, like they're in the walls or something. He just feels the presence of someone. Now the cool thing about this new job offer is that Fast Brand Entertainment uh, let him work in his own house, uh, which is now Victoria's house of course. They just let him work in the attic, which is pretty cool, um, but weirdly he gets haunted by these visions every night, uh, but in the morning he wakes up and he pours them into the game, uh, kind of similar to In the Flesh I guess, where you're pouring your own emotion into the game. Uh, and one day Abigail wants to play hide and seek. Uh, Steve pretends he doesn't know where Avery is and Avery jumps out at him. Ah! Just like that. Abigail jumps out of the closet. Ah! Just like that. And it reminds him of his night terrors. He goes to the attic to work on jump scares. So it's, there's kind of like a weird reality here where things influence other things in other places. Do you get me? But even after all of this, Steve just doesn't feel safe in his own house. He cannot sleep at all, and he hears this thing rumbling in the walls. He holds the door shut in his bedroom, and the walls begin to throb. They just, like, like these large bubbles that, that come out, uh, remind him of, the, of, like, pizza when it's just come out of the oven. Uh, and they also, like, spray an oily substance across the room. God, this is terrifying already. Victoria apparently doesn't see anything and tells him just to go back to sleep. Uh, and then, <laughs> a weird contrast to the story, we turn to the radio where there's a guy named DJ Dan the Music Man. I love that name. That is so smart. It is so amazing. I love it so much. So DJ Dan the Music Man on the radio says that there is currently a huge snowstorm outside and so nobody is allowed to leave their homes. Kind of reminds me of COVID-19. Anyway, <laughs> uh, there's a high pitch ringing in Steve's ear still and it's getting worse and worse by the moment. Uh, but weirdly, when he is actually programming the game and stuff, when he's making his games, 
um, the ringing stops completely. So yeah. Uh, and speaking of that, he's actually finished one out of four of the games. Uh, but of course, to get the money, you need to complete all four games. That's the whole contract. Um, he's constantly spinning out of control. He's losing track of time. And he looks and he's got small cuts all over his chest. What on earth is happening here? Well, the walls pulsate again. And, uh, and he starts screaming, Stop it! Stop it! Stop! I'm in so much pain. Uh, well, I don't know if he was in pain. But then suddenly, a head bursts out of the wall and it lunges at Steve. It's got sharp teeth. It has like a veiny face. Uh, it's got large cat-like eyes with pupils, I mean, I mean large eyes with cat-like pupils and it's got a long tongue that ends up piercing him. This is, oh my god, uh, do you believe this is even FNAF at this point? I cannot believe this is FNAF. Uh, it turns out this is a huge metallic snake that emerges from the wall and slithers towards Steve. Oh my god, he goes into his room and just completely shuts the door, puts a chair under the handle or whatever. Just completely, nope, nope, I'm not touching that. Uh, now, the thing is about all of this is Victoria doesn't believe any of it. Victoria doesn't believe the snake, the pulsating walls, the high ringing in his ears. Hey, it's DJ Music, I mean DJ Dan Music Man's time. Uh, he starts playing a Sailor Thrift song. The popular artist Sailor Thrift. Okay, so just like all of us, Steve gets tired of DJ Dan the Music Man because of the stupid name. And Victoria says don't change the radio to a different channel. But he tries to change the radio and it turns out that everything is static. Like, like there, there aren't other any other radio uh, with, uh, stations. Victoria leaves the bed and then the walls pulsate. It's weird how when Victoria leaves, the walls start pulsating and stuff, which is probably why she doesn't believe in anything that Steve is saying. Uh, and then, this is the part that I'm going to cry at while I say it. A huge spider, the size of a basketball. I mean, I have, I have this. A spider this big, okay, like pretty much, probably bigger. I think a basketball is probably bigger than this. A spider this big, crawls out the wall, just casually, crawls out the wall, and the abdomen of the spider opens, and thousands and thousands of spiders fall out of it, and crawl onto Steve's arms, and his face, and his ears, and his mouth, and his nose. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling that when I do the audiobook for this story, I am actually going to scream, okay, because this is my worst nightmare. I am imagining it like coming out of my wall any second now, oh god, please no. Now Victoria comes and says that there's nothing there, there's no spider, and they just seem to vanish. Like, they, they just, they're just gone now. So Steve has had enough of all of this torment, there's been a giant snake that's come out of the wall, there's been a giant spider that's come out of the wall, those are two of my worst phobias by the way, uh, and, <laughs> uh, yeah, Steve, ha Steve has had enough, he goes for the door, and then this ringing gets even worse and worse, like like he's not allowed to leave, it's like he's on house arrest or something. He, he He's like, hmm, where could this ringing coming, be coming from? He looks at the smoke alarm, takes it off the wall, slams it on the floor, boom, 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 completely smashes it up, and then, uh, what happens? <laughs> and then the ringing completely stops. But there's weird sounds of gears spinning and like wheels and it sounds like he's in some sort of factory or th at least that's what they say in the in the book it's like he's in a factory and he looks around the room and not everything is as it first appeared you know that there's tread marks around the room now and there's trap doors where the monsters were coming out where the spider was coming out there's a trap door there now so hmm maybe not everything's real Steve hears something moving as well, so he hides in the closet and then he looks out and sees Victoria and she is an animatronic. That's right, Victoria is an animatronic with a plastic human face and the children are robots too. There you go. Uh, who could have predicted it? Uh, I mean, at first I thought Victoria might be Eleanor, but uh, we're not too sure about that anymore. Could, could still be uh, illusion disc stuff going on here, so... Make sure you uh, theorize about that. But 
you know, their their voices have gone more like demonic, kind of like aggressive tones. And the voice from the radio says, time to come out, playtime is over. And uh, <laughs> DJ Dan the Music Man is back and he speaks to him saying that if he wants to be happy, he needs to just kind of like stop resisting everything. Just completely let go and push a red button that is on the radio. Uh, and according to Steve, I mean, according to Dan, sorry, uh, it will let Steve create his own reality just how he wants it. Now, now reality can be whatever I, I want it to be, the Thanos quote, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, <laughs> so Steve goes ahead, finds the radio, I mean, the radio is right there, but he gets the radio, he pushes the button, and uh, the ringing comes back. What What's happening? He completely... He goes dizzy, he falls to the ground again. And then, everything goes still. Everything goes quiet, everything goes still. And he sees Victoria in the doorway. So, Steve gets up off the floor, and goes to hug Victoria. He hugs her, everything's alright. He is so, so happy that all of it is over. Then Victoria starts stabbing him in the heart. <coughs> Just like that, uh, with the Minecraft noise, because his name is Steve. Any more questions? Guys, this story is insane, okay? If you want just a brief outline of this story, just in case I skipped over, I mean, I didn't skip over parts, but just in case you didn't understand all of it, basically what's happened is, I think it could be Fazbear Entertainment's doing, but that's something to theorize about. We'll probably make uh, our own separate theory view on that. But Victoria's house was an illusion, uh, he kind of passed out in the room and then everything after that was kind of fake. Uh, it was all an illusion, probably illusion discs or something else going on here. Uh, and then, yeah, he when he broke the smoke alarm or whatever, that completely uh, showed him the, reality, the true reality of it. He found out that everything was like a factory place, kind of like developed to scare him or something. Uh, and that Victoria and his children were animatronics and stuff. And then, I don't know what really what happened, I have to think about it more, but when he pressed the radio button, um, that was kind of him letting go. And then he thought everything was okay. Victoria just stabs him in the heart. I love this story so much. Even if it's a little bit confusing, there is still an amazing mystery behind all of this and it is up there it is such a good story let me know what you think of it as well and let me know your theories as i said before i'm probably going to do my own theory video on this because this is very interesting was this the work of phasma entertainment let me know anyway thank you for watching and i'll see you later goodbye